Good evening everybody, welcome to Direct Drive Hub's uh, Tuesday Nights uh, Theory Workshop video. Hope you are all well, especially after all the rain that we had last week. Um, yeah, causing a few problems on the roads and that, but um, hope you're all safe and hope you're all well. Anyway, tonight's Theory Workshop, we're going to have a look at a bit of positioning. Now, I know, um, or a good few weeks ago, um, we had a look at uh, crossroads and box junctions and positioning um, and I just want to go back to that because obviously had a couple of queries come up on this uh, recently so um, I thought it was a good idea just to have a look at one or two things and that to help you uh, dealing with crossroads particularly when turning right okay so I'm not going into the box junction rule and that okay obviously we explained all about the box junction rule obviously just having a think about positioning and the sort of things okay that we need to look for okay before turning right at a major crossroads um, to help us make sure that we're gonna keep our position good and stay in a safe position as well okay so here we've got a crossroads uh, and mainly want to be looking at as I say turning right now Generally, quite often, okay, as we said before, okay, where there is no road markings on your lanes, um, we would normally then use the left-hand lane to follow the road ahead. So it would be the left-hand lane for road ahead and left-hand lane for turning left, and then normally the right-hand lane for turning right. Now, obviously, for whatever reason, uh, road markings may put down, and it's telling you otherwise. So it's telling you here, right-hand lane for road ahead. Um, and for turning right and the left hand lane is for turning left only so this is important okay when we're approaching a junction particularly where we've got lanes that we are identifying if there's any road markings and making sure that we are in the correct lane for the direction we want to go I think it's probably worth mentioning as well okay if for any reason and it can easily happen okay if for any reason we find ourselves in the wrong lane uh, and particularly when it's busy, then the last thing we want to do is suddenly just change lane, okay, without looking and causing a problem to another road user in the other lane. So if that is the case, and we were in the left-hand lane here where we wanted to take the road ahead and we suddenly realise that this is a left turn only, and it's too busy to move across into the right-hand lane or too late to move across into the right-hand lane, then the safest thing for us to do is check our mirrors, signal left, and turn left. All right. What we should never do is ignore it and take the road ahead, because obviously that could be extremely dangerous, particularly other traffic taking the road ahead from the right-hand lane and not expecting you to do that. So yeah, turn left. Um, and I know sometimes, okay, this has come up on driving tests uh, where. A pupil on driving tests has found themselves in the wrong lane and panicked. Um, nothing to panic about. Just go with the lane, okay, where the lane is taking you to go. That will not cause you to fail your driving test. I think that's really important, okay. Obviously, if you took the road ahead from the wrong lane, or you just suddenly shot over into the right-hand lane and caused problems to other road users, that then would cause you to fail your driving test. So obviously, just turn left, all right? <clears throat> now, if the examiner is giving you directions on your driving test, the examiner then would just redirect you. If you are on sat-nav on your driving test, then sat-nav would remap it, reroute it, and then give you directions. It will not cause you a problem on your driving test, okay? So that's something, again, I think, to sort of like really be aware of in that situation. You know, we can all be driving in uh, towns and cities, areas we don't know, and any of us, okay, could find ourselves in the wrong lane at any time. And as far as just keep it safe and that, not obviously cause other road users a problem. And obviously, in reality, if I was to take a find myself turning left where I didn't want to turn, I would then just find a safe way of turning myself around to come back to where I'm going, or follow sat nav in the direction it was taking me to to reroute it. So it can happen to any of us. Um, because sometimes as well, okay, when it's very busy, okay, there is road markings down. But obviously when the traffic, okay, is busy, it can actually be hard to see and identify the road markings. So, you know, sometimes it'd be a case of that you haven't seen 
that this lane is left turn only and it might not be any fault of your own because obviously the build up of traffic okay, is covering those road markings so yeah if that happens don't worry about it look out for road signs because sometimes okay you know on the left and that you might see a road sign okay actually showing you the lanes and and giving you that as well okay which you can pick up but there's not always signs showing you the lanes so it can be difficult but it's again something nothing that you actually need to worry about and panic about if you're forced to turn left when you actually didn't want to okay so looking at this junction here okay um, I want to concentrate on the right turn so we, we've spoken as I said we've spoken about box junctions and you know we, we shouldn't enter a box junction and stop in the box junction except when turning right and the only thing preventing us from turning right is oncoming traffic as long as our exit road is clear we can stop in the box junction okay and wait for an opportunity to safely be able to turn right okay so I don't want to go too much into that today because I say we've already explained and looked at that you can scroll back okay through our Facebook and um, find uh, that video to if you, if you want more details about box junctions and, and things like that the thing okay obviously is watching your position okay if you're coming into this junction okay and you're going to be stopping okay because you've got to wait for this oncoming traffic for turning right okay what you've got to be careful here is if we look at try and identify okay the lanes okay on the oncoming traffic so here we've identified okay it is the right hand lane that's taking the road ahead so we've got to make sure that when we pull into the junction we're not pulling over to the right where we're going to cause traffic in that right hand lane taking the road ahead a problem all right so we've got to make sure that we're keeping that lane free okay for them to come through if that lane okay was for a right turn only and this lane was first straight on and turning left then obviously it wouldn't be so bad okay if we then pulled ourselves in okay to this sort of position where we were in front of this lane because obviously this traffic would be turning to their right so we're not stopping traffic from going ahead okay by pulling in front of the lane so have a look at it because it will have an effect okay on how you're going to position and where you can be okay when you're stopping in the center of junction for turning right so if, if you can identify okay the lane markings it will tell you if you're not sure for whatever reason you can't see the lane markings or road markings because there's too much traffic then obviously the safest thing to do is obviously position yourself okay nice and straight and keep that right lane ahead of you clear so it's not going to cause a problem all right um, so yeah it's it is always worth having a look ahead okay and obviously trying to see okay where that traffic's going sometimes okay you can find okay even if you can't see the road markings this traffic is starting to move and you find that the traffic in the left hand lane is taking the uh, the road ahead and the traffic in that right hand lane is coming in for them to position right so obviously we can then think about what we call a near sight to near side position so if a car is coming into turn okay they're probably going to come in all right um, so we'll, we'll change the road markings here so this is for road ahead and left and this is for right only okay so the car okay will come in and probably position themselves like that and we would come in and we would position ourselves okay so this car here is going to be turning and this car here okay well us are going to be turning so we're coming in at what we call a near side to near side position and that is okay perfectly fine because obviously we're not going to cause a problem with this lane because all the traffic is turning to their right and alternatively the driver of this vehicle isn't going to cause a problem with this lane because it's all turning right so it's something you do need to be aware of okay when it comes to your positioning is having a look at where, where the oncoming traffic is coming from so you can think about okay your um, positioning generally what I will sort of like do with my positioning okay particularly if I'm on a junction where I'm not as sure and I'm turning right okay I will come in 
but I'm actually going to be looking at the center of the road that I'm turning into. So what I'd want to do is come in, okay, and keep myself back and behind the center line so I'm not overshooting it. And I've also got to make sure that I can keep myself back because obviously I'm keeping myself clear for any traffic as well, okay, that's coming in, who they want to turn right. So you're keeping, you're keeping that space. So obviously then, again, we can turn. And this sort of position, okay, would be more suitable, okay, if the right-hand lane, okay, was for road ahead as well. It's not going to cause a problem, all right? Generally, the reason why, okay, the left-hand lane road ahead rather than the right-hand lane for road ahead is the problem is, okay, when you're setting up the right-hand lane for the road ahead and you've got vehicles wanting to turn right, is those vehicles having to wait to turn right is now going to block the right-hand lane. So obviously that traffic wanting the road ahead can't flow until the car or the vehicles in front have turned right. Whereas obviously left-hand lane for road ahead, generally there's nothing going to be stopping the traffic turning left going into that road. So whether you're turning left or taking the road ahead, that left-hand lane is going to flow a lot, lot better unless obviously there's a problem okay in that road but that's generally why okay you're more than likely find the left hand lane for the road ahead and if there is no road markings um down we should then use the left hand lane for the road ahead and not the right hand lane so we don't get stuck behind traffic that's turning right okay so hopefully that just gives you some ideas about positioning at crossroads okay whether this crossroads is controlled by traffic lights or it's a giveaway junction or whatever, okay, doesn't really make much difference on the positioning. Okay, obviously think about your positioning. If you go to your driving essential skills on junctions and crossroads, okay, it will talk to you in there, okay, about offside to offside turning and um, etc. and the other positions as well, okay, to give you a few more things, okay, about because sometimes road there can be road markings that are put into the middle of the road, okay, showing you where to position, all right, so if there is road markings in the center giving you a positional point for turning right, again, then we need to identify those road markings and put ourselves into that. Unfortunately, not all junctions are the same, all right, so that's where it is really important for us to make sure that we're reading our road signs on approach to that junction, picking up the road markings and stuff, so we can actually see what's going on so we can plan that junction a lot, lot better. So hopefully that's some help to you. So just remember, okay, as far as, you know, your drive's concerned, if you find yourself in the wrong lane, don't panic about it. That's the last thing you want to do. If you have to take a direction or a turning that you didn't want to do, it's not a problem at all. Okay, deal with it. You'd be redirected um, and stuff. And it certainly, certainly would not cause you um, a problem on your driving test. Just whilst we are on the subject okay, of crossroads uh, and that, uh, I don't know if you're aware, I did actually put a post up on Facebook um, last week. The law on box junctions, okay, is what well, the law's not going to change, but there is talk about, okay, obviously if you're found stopped in a box junction when you shouldn't be, the fine is obviously going to be increased uh, and I believe that fine is now going to go up to £130 okay, for stopping in a box when you shouldn't be. The thing about that, okay, you'll see the box because obviously you've, you've, you know, the, the box junction will have the yellow crisscross, okay. But the thing to remember then, okay, even when you haven't got the yellow box painted in that junction, Ideally, you should actually be treating all junctions like that as a box junction. If you find you're coming up to, approaching up to the, uh, the stop line or the giveaway line or whatever it might be, and you cannot get to the other side, stay behind the stop or the giveaway line. Do not enter the junction. And even when you're in traffic and you've just got a junction on the left or whatever, you know, plan that, hold back from the traffic, keep those junctions clear, don't block it. Because obviously, if you're blocking a junction to the right, um, traffic, oncoming traffic that wants to turn into that road can't turn in because you'll block their path. What you're actually now going to be doing is creating a traffic jam in the opposite direction because obviously 
that car is going to sit there and wait until you move to clear the junction so that they're able to turn. So it is obviously thinking about, okay, even when you're in the flow of traffic, making sure that you're stopping in the right places and where you're stopping um, is not going to cause a problem to other road users. One of the main reasons why we end up stopping in the wrong place is when we're moving along in slow moving traffic, we are too close to the vehicle in front. So the vehicle in front stops, we've got to immediately stop because we've got no room to play with. So obviously that finally we end up stopping across something we shouldn't. So the thing is, back off, okay? And obviously, so therefore if that vehicle in front stops, you've got time to have a look to see whether you're gonna stop earlier or if you can run up a bit close to the vehicle. So keep your distance. Keeping your distance will enable you to see the road, see the situations, okay? And plan a safer place for you to stop so you're not gonna cause other road users a problem. <clears throat> Okay, so that's really uh, about it for this week. Um, so just remember, okay, on this, okay, please like and share. I ask it every week, I know. I would, okay, I mean, I'm very happy with the views that we get on here. It's great to see that we get the views, but I really would appreciate, okay, the more likes and people to share this video out. So if you know somebody that is learning to drive, a friend, a relative, anybody, okay, share them encourage them okay we are giving you some free expert advice here to help you improve the standard of your driving okay and help you obviously on your quest okay of obviously passing your driving test and becoming a safe driver so some great great advice here which we're offering for free of charge all we're actually asking you to do is just like and share okay and obviously spread the word um, about our theory workshop okay on a Tuesday night and remember as well, um, it's not just for your theory tests. The great thing about obviously explaining things like this, it helps you understand the questions when they come up on your theory test. So if they're asking you questions about box junctions and when you can't stop in them, all right, because obviously you've watched the videos, okay, you have a better understanding of those questions and therefore being able to answer the questions. And this is what we're trying to do here with the theory as well, okay, is to try and put the theory into a more practical way for you to learn and understand it. Um, so it gives you better understanding and obviously be able to answer the questions on your theory test. And also, okay, making sure you've got that knowledge there so you can put it into your practical side of things on your driving lessons. So the theory workshop really is for your theory and for your practical uh, lessons as well to run side along your practical lessons so whether you pass your theory test fantastic still tune in and watch your okay, as on here because obviously you're going to get some great advice and tips and stuff okay of what you're supposed to be doing on your practical lessons as well so obviously we're, we're helping on both sides of things okay so like and share you can visit us at our website at uh, directdrivehub.co.uk um, and yeah just obviously Encourage people to, uh, if you know anyone learning to drive, encourage them to come in and join us here on uh, Facebook, okay, on a, on a Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Okay, everybody, I hope you have a really great week. Um, and if you've got any questions or you've got any ideas or anything like that that we could use and speak about, okay, on our Tuesday evening here, then please, okay, get in touch. You can message us, email us, whatever, okay, through the usual channels, um, and I'll be happy to sort of help you out. Okie dokie everybody, have a good week and we'll see you next week. Bye for now.